It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, as was mentioned, we have three co-chairs, uh, the Senate co-chair, and then the House has both a Republican and a Democrat. But when it comes to the problems and challenges that we're facing for the 2011-13 budget, it's a nonpartisan issue. I mean, the three co-chairs have a huge responsibility to, under the Constitution, to provide a balanced budget. And so before we leave this session of the legislature, we have to have a balanced budget, and it's going to be a huge challenge. Uh, today, I'd like to give you some background into why it's such a problem and let you know where we are fiscally. So I begin by giving you just kind of a, of a rundown on the way that budgeting takes place in Oregon. We have two budgets. We have an all-funds budget, which has, uh, as about a fourth of it, the, the tax money and the lottery, and it's called general fund and lottery. And then you have about um, 15 billion or so that is federal dollars that we receive, and then another 30 billion or so that comes from fees and fines and all other kinds of resources. And so you put all of those together, including debt and borrowing and all, and you have what, what this, this scope, as you can see, uh, we ended up with about a 60, actually it turned out to be about a $61 billion budget for the current biennium. You know, we have two year budgeting period, the current, the one we are in right now is 09 to 11. It ends on June 30th of this year. You know, you don't have to be a statistician to take a look at that slope and know that we're heading for trouble with that kind of growth. If we focus on those parts of the budget that really just relate to income tax, tobacco tax, uh, the lottery, you know, the things that we have a lot of control over, this is the graph that applies there. On the far right, you see this huge jump that is, would be the current service level requirement if we were to continue to fund government as we have in the past. In other words, you say, okay, next to it you see 0911, and we were at uh, you know, around 14 billion or so, and then to maintain current service level, it would have to go to over $18 billion. Now, that is a huge jump in one two-year period, and it's a, a major problem uh, if we were going to try and retain that current, the current service level because of the size of the jump. If you add to that the fact that we balanced our budget in 0911 with a lot of one-time money. This slide shows that there's $1.6 billion of one-time money that went into getting us into the current budget. And so here we have a you know, $14 billion budget that's going to go to 18, and to get to the 14 even, we had to use one-time money. Now, the, the past governor had a reset cabinet. The reset cabinet, which is a group of people that kind of were coming up with a document for the new governor coming in to let him know how things were in the state, they came out with their updated report in December, and they said, no, this $1.6 billion isn't correct. It's actually $1.9 billion. And so, try and get this into perspective. We came out of a budget at the end of the 09 session, and we balanced, but we took $1.9 billion of one-time money, ARRA money, federal stimulus money, and all of that to balance that budget. And then, since we came out of that session, we've had some problems as far as the revenue forecasts for, you know, for ongoing revenue. Now, this one shows the revenue forecast since 2000 and seven here, which was almost 18 billion, and in three years, it's now at 13.7 billion. So that means that if we were to try and balance the budget based on the numbers we had back three years ago, it would have taken $4 billion more in revenue than what we've actually got forecasted presently. And so to see this kind of a a decrease in the amount of revenue helps indicate that we have a major problem because the cost, as you saw, is going up, but the revenue is coming down dramatically. This shows the growth in uh, full-time equivalent positions for the, the government since we, uh, you know, just over time. And as you can see, the, the trend is up, and part of that is there's, there's this thought that, well, if we expand state government, we're providing jobs. But as we in the private sector know, public sector jobs do not create prosperity. 
they can provide services, but when they drain too much from the, uh, you know, fr from the economy, then you have a huge problem. This kind of shows how it worked in real life. The green line at the top shows that over the last three years, three and a half years, we have had an increase in government jobs, but look what's happened to the private sector. When this came out, it shows a loss of 154,000 private sector jobs. Now, I talked to the director of the Legislative Revenue Office, and I said, in good times, how many new jobs, new jobs do we create a year? And he said, well, the 15-year average is about 25,000 new jobs a year. Okay, so in good times, you get 25,000 new jobs a year. Since 2007, we've lost over 150,000. So that means that if we were in recovery, and if you didn't get the memo, we've been in recovery since the, the summer of 2009. Uh, and that means that we, it would take us six years just to get back to where we were in 2007 with no consideration for high school graduates, for people that have been in private bi businesses who've left uh, those and are now back in the job market, or in migration, people moving to Oregon. That would be just to get back to where we were. That's a huge challenge. I learned just the other day that the population increase in Oregon since 2000 has gone up well over 400,000 new people, okay? It's grown that much. The jobs that we have in Oregon currently are 16,000 fewer jobs today than we had in 2000. That's not a real good statistic when your population's gone up a half a million uh, 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 people and your jobs have gone down by 16,000 10 years later. Huge problem. One of the reasons it's such a problem is that Oregon is dependent on income taxes for our revenue. 93% of the general fund budget comes from either personal or corporate income taxes. And so if you have fewer people working and fewer businesses thriving, then they're not gonna be paying the level of income taxes that you need to maintain the level of services that we've become accustomed to. So it's a huge challenge that we face. We have an opportunity to, to deal with it uh, and, and we have a responsibility to deal with it before we get out of session. The challenge that we're gonna face is how in the world do you maintain the money that you need to keep your prisoners incarcerated to provide benefits for Oregon's most needy students and to invest in our, our, our most needy um, citizens and to invest in our students from K-12 all the way up through graduate level. And in the engineering field, you certainly know the need for qualified graduates coming out of our schools. I heard one statistic from uh, up in Washington Microsoft was saying that they couldn't find 5% of the graduates they needed in math from their local school system. And then they said something that's quite interesting, and that is that if you want to have a doctorate, a guy graduating with a doctorate in mathematics 10 years from now, that individual is in junior high school right now. And so what kind of training are they getting in math and science right now that's gonna prepare them so that they will be entering the, the, this highly competitive global market where you need such expertise in math and science. Each of these three areas, public safety, human services, and education are vitally important, but we have a diminished area of revenue and a increase in expenses, and it's requiring the legislature to look at how to reform government in new and innovative ways so that we can provide the services that are needed at a much more, less expensive um, uh, requirement on the resources that we have. So those are the challenges that we face, and I hope that uh, you'll work with us, give us your ideas uh, as we go through this session, because we want very much to make Oregon uh, a place where people want to come and want to do business and make sure that our children and grandchildren have the kind of education and the kind of state that will be valued and, and worthwhile for the 21st century. Thank you.